And here we are. I'm on page 5 of my edition of this arabesque. This is measure 63, Risoluto. You know, all kinds of chordal harmonies in C major happening here. Uh, the senza pedale that I pointed out last time, it probably suggests a much more uh, regal sort of style, uh, a bit pompous maybe, uh, almost like a brass section greeting the arrival of some monarch. Um, definitely not trying to maintain that pedal style of, you know. This kind of stuff so it's much more strict right I think those three measures are senza pedale without the pedal but I think that fourth measure with the, you know, that sort of harmonization in in the right uh, left hand um, brings back the pedal. It doesn't say that, but it's often the case that in those times composers didn't always notate everything. They kind of assumed people would know the style. Now here at the Senza Pedale it's quite possible you could play right, very pedaled. Clearly Debussy wants it to be a little more detached, a little more articulated perhaps. So uh, let's actually figure out what the fingering should be. Uh, firstly, let's make sure I'm in the center here, so I'm on this middle line. Oh, my nose has shifted. <laughs> okay, here it is. So, uh, since my right hand has to play all the way down here by G, I think the nose should be around G as well. So that's what I would notate. Torso equals G4. Yeah, And that reminds me to start right here. In the right hand... I would fourth finger there. Okay, let's see what else do I need to think about. so many possibilities. I am not entirely convinced that the way it's currently notated makes you think that all the upward stem pointing notes or upward stem, yes, notes um, are to be played by the right hand even though they are, some of them are notated down in the bottom staff. And that could be Debussy's intention initially, um, or it could be a musical decision. You know, we have the bass line as a separate entity and these chords uh, as, as something else. All I know is that about some other piece Debussy wrote that I don't really care what fingers you use as long as it sounds good. I think it was in reference to uh, one of his later pieces, Etudes. But in any case, so um, I'm just wondering if maybe maybe if we used uh, the thumb of the left hand to play some of these lower uh, notes or the notes that are the low notes of the upper stem uh, chords or 
up pointing stems on those seemingly right hand chords. So here's what I mean. Let's grab, for instance, this F right here, this E, that F, that E, this F, right? So just those notes and give them to the uh, left hand, which means in the left hand, we start with 5-2-5-2. Five, two, five, two. Like five, two, five, five. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. But that makes sure that the, the uh, thumb is always ready to strike that F natural. All right, maybe another five here with the thumb on one. Just move the thumb to one here. Of course, continuing to use the thumb. Four finger here, three and two here. And then in reverse, right? I like that palindrome shape that you can see centered around that half note. Um, yeah, so what, what's next? Then you go on. Uh, yeah, probably that three is a good idea, right? Oops, not the two, three right here. possibility is to put it actually put a two there now that's an idea which you might or might not like but the reason I'm thinking it might be worthwhile is because when we get to that four on the DD octave um, maybe it'll be easier to like put a second finger here and position ourselves for that bottom G right here so that might be an idea. Oh, of course, here it would be... Yeah, it'll just have to be a five on that downbeat. Okay, so that's the left hand in a nutshell. Um, let's see, so two on the left. that two three four exchange with two and you're ready so as an idea I will put that two next to that four and of course if you do that that sort of implies that the pedal come comes back here so let's do that let's actually bring in the pedal on the final beat of this senza pedale uh, passage In the right hand now. A hmm, couple of ideas here I have. Yeah, I, I think that works. I think that works. Okay, so we obviously have to continue after that red colored four. Put a three here. Uh, let's see. And then just move the one. Okay. Yeah, need to use that four there. Maybe it. Yeah, five three one five four one. It doesn't really matter on that uh, final beats or final bars chord. So like this. All right, let's see. Nice and slow. No pedal. No pedal.
Okay, so uh, slowly just walking through those positions to make sure they all make sense. They're not really wild uh, position shifts, they're just close to each other, but... No, you need to pull in the fifth finger here, and you need to move the fourth finger. And again, pull in the fifth finger right like that. Adjust the first finger, then one and one move here so little little adjustments nothing major but you just need to know that these things are making sense to the body and the fingers and the hands then maybe to string it together we have to start at the end so let's say we have we put a stopping point right here all right just make sure you can land there and then just hold the use my uh, purple color now just hold the C already kind of adjust your fingers like that and then that's all you do super minor transition but worth starting there okay once you can do that so hold that down and now continue I guess pedal as well, if, if you're okay with that idea of mine. One more time. Okay, just working through that little snippet. Once that feels comfortable, and again, for everybody it's a different number of times. Uh, go back to here, hold that down. Right, you're about to do a little annoying over the five transition to finger four All right just hold it down get ready and then uh, got confused one more time oh didn't use the pedal but okay okay what i'm actually finding helpful is stopping before this final chord again when you're doing something difficult and you have all kinds of position shifts it's a good idea to limit your segments to something that your brain doesn't panic about so if it only helps uh, to do just two chords do that don't try to do three four five position shifts because it might be too much to begin with holding that down just move okay let's get rid of this purple start from here now yeah that might be too much or it might be okay uh, either way if it is too much just get rid of that blue stopping point maybe put it right here just move and stop and now right all you're trying to do is work through any position adjustments that you need to make at a comfortable pace without any stress or panic so that your hands learn these motions uh, because once they learn the motions then it's easy to play the notes but before they learn the motions, you're, you're just, oh, you know, where do I need to move to play? It, it's not automated, so there's just a lot of brain involved in direction of the hands. Anyway, so at so some point, um, I'll just get rid of this line here, this line here. You know, you're, you're essentially playing this like that. something along those lines and then you get into that uh, measure uh, the last measure of this line I think those fingers are fine let me think yeah 
Maybe I would go as far as suggesting to put a 5 down here, simply because we of course have this jumping note here, right? And then we have to prepare this position for the th next four notes right here. But then the next set of notes begins with the same note, right? So it's like D, F, G, B, D, F, G, B. Now, next set is D, F. Oh, well, it's not actually G, B as we go into the next line there, but it begins the same way. And if you use this fingering, it actually solves some problems um, down the road. So maybe that's uh, an interesting idea. All right, so of course, another jump there to the new position like that. Okay, so that's the left hand. The right hand is super straightforward. All pedaled. And I would encourage you to practice moving the right hand position at the same time as the left hand right here at the indigo highlight. Again, you can work through it backwards just that's where I need to be if I am there I know I can play everything else but before it I have to do this I'm kind of stuck here both hands and I'm holding that B just before the indigo highlight and I'll go like ah right something like that one more time okay, I'm holding that G I'm holding that B before the indigo and then Ah. <laughs> I mean, it's it's not a big deal once you know what you're doing, but at first you really have to think. The pedal is down, of course. Okay. Eventually this shift becomes less of this uh, <laughs> and just something your hands can do. But at first you really, really have to focus and then maybe step back one more. So holding the G and G together two before the uh, indigo highlight and pedal is down, right? So you're just kind of preparing your starting point. And now you're about to play the B and leave. All right, check that you landed correctly. Okay, so G, G. Okay, that's the leap. And you work backwards, eventually you can do something like... Right? And then, of course, you have to add in an extra leap bottom G, boom. But again, with this backwards uh, practice method or approach or whatever you want to call it, the nice thing is that as you move forward, you are doing things you've just practiced, so they feel easier. Okay, so that's that last measure. Let's keep moving. All right, so that obviously makes me play the... Uh, left hand with these fingers <clears throat> Let me think about some other fingering possibilities mm. yeah it's an interesting thing i i think five at the beginning is fine but given what's going on later we, you kind of need to use four four here Mm -hmm. You have to use that two here, D, and then move four. Diminuendo molto, three, four. Now, incidentally, no. Oh, yeah, there is a written note. I just realized I, I didn't see it. All right, so you know, you're kind of slowing down, slowing down, and then pick up the tempo one more time once. Tempo primo is indicated. Tempo primo. Okay, uh, so here we go. Mm, in the left hand, let's see. Yeah, I would, I would just use the hand inside the keyboard arrow like that. And 
and use the pedal a little bit. I think it helps. But not maybe maybe not for the beginning. In part, that sense of pedale could apply in in a broad sense to this entire section until we return to the key of E major. But I, I, you know, except for that big arpeggio bar there, um, I think it it just works for the clarity of the passage because it, this sounds kind of wishy-washy, but this. You know, maybe I'm using the pedal a little bit to help connect that difficult left hand. But other than that, yeah, pedal is really getting in the way of clarity in this passage. like that as far as how it sounds. Uh, what would be a good fingering? Yeah, maybe at the very end you tap the pedal, oh sorry, um, like that, to clear the harmony and put finger two right on that D sharp. So D one one there one on a G sharp and you can almost reach with the second finger across the fourth finger if you wanted to nothing wrong with that huh? yeah to connect nicely that C sharp Oh, sorry, sorry, the C natural to the C sharp, you would probably do put the pedal down, lift for C sharp, put it back down. You don't even necessarily have to lift it here because it's all part of the same harmony. All right, so you're, you're clearing that C sharp, C sharp minor harmony and then as the D sharp comes in, so it's so like... Look, looking right, look right at that moment. Let's call it cyan. So the pedal, um, you're holding these down. The pedal comes down, and then C sharp comes up and comes down. Release. You don't even necessarily have to uh, play it again or press it again. The pedal, I mean. So that's an, an optional thing here, but yeah, I mean, okay, and then we continue, uh, but yeah, just gentle press of the pedal on that cyan highlight and release with a C sharp to have a very clear harmonic change from to this yeah from C, what is it E or actually C augmented to C sharp minor uh, harmony but uh, yeah that, that would be the general gist of this passage whoops I really think that playing the left hand inside the keyboard helps a lot here because of that B flat. And then a little pedal there. Release here. Reposition the fingers in the right hand, so maybe a little reminder to do that right here. I just put them right like that, three and four. And then. That pew diminuendo means even more diminuendo, even make it even more special. Uh, oh, and by the way, I'm stupid because at diminuendo molto, we actually start with forte and I'm already playing so quietly. So that's my bad. Uh, let's see, where's forte? 
put the reminder in. Oh, there it is. So, yeah, th that's what we want, that forte at the beginning. So, um, yeah, let's put uh, another pedal helper. Mm -hmm. There is an interesting one. Let me highlight it in Oops. there. Light green color. That hairpin diminuendo. Overall, we're doing the PO diminuendo. So, and that's what you would do. But I think the PO diminuendo really applies then to that harmonic support. But that melody, the flute perhaps, right, it's trying to come up. So we don't, I guess, lose that uh, gesture to the global diminuendo. Yeah, interesting. Um, hmm. Right, so if you start G sharp, that uh, fourth finger there, last measure, really, really quietly, and then just ever so slightly hairpin the volume up, so that that E really sounds, and then... I think the idea is to connect that top line from all those G, G, G sharp, and then finally A. There's that A. Let's color it pink. So we, we don't want to lose the melodic line, even though we have the general diminuendo down to piano over from forte. Okay, so an interesting passage. Something like that. I mean, you can really work these um, seemingly easy passages quite a lot. I mean, you just work and work, work uh, until the sound is just right. Um, but the reason you would do it is not so much technical. It's it's the musical reason. It is still technical because you're trying to control everything so well. But you're trying to not gloss over these easier passages because they're so exposed and so you really want to make sure every note is crystal clear, every harmony change is making sense. And the nice thing is we have the ritenuto, ritardando, I guess, that helps us to take time to articulate every detail. All right, so then we get to tempo primo and the very nice thing is We've done it all before. There is nothing to do. Uh, in fact, I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to go back to, in this case, the second page. And I'm going to use the highlight here. Let's make it, let's use orange highlight. That's actually a problem. Hold on. So it's a shame I cannot see this page and what's now page, what, five next to each other. Luckily, I do have it on my other screen. And so you don't see that screen, but I can just make sure of things. So we begin with, with this highlight, yeah. But then the continuation at this point on page five, which you do see, let's let me just, well, no, sorry, you, you do not see that page five, but the, the, the thing that you saw a minute ago is the same as this. 
da -di -dum, da -di -da -di. So that orange highlight continues. And I'm actually going to go back to where we were, right? So there we have it. So, so far, so good. We have a little bit of the material on that second page that you saw me highlight just the two measures there. And then on the first page, all the usual stuff. then we get into the famous that's all the same stuff on the first page so just continue yeah all the same same stuff so come on Yeah, I mean, it's all, all of this is the same. So going back, which means we're now at page six. Yeah, and so the only, the, the moment where it changes is right here. We're at 31 minutes. I, I guess I could finish this piece but I think it might, you know what, Let, let's do this next time. So you're, you're covered all the way until the end of that orange highlight. And so, right, you can just barely see it there and the orange highlight. And we get into this section here. So we'll definitely go into that next time uh, and whatever else is on that final page to complete this tutorial uh, series on this piece. So yeah, again, uh, any questions so far, uh, let me know. Uh, otherwise, see you uh, soon.